Good morning, welcome to Thought for the Day. As we come to the end of the week, we're coming to the last in our current series on Psalm 119, which we'll return to at a later date. What are you most longing for? At the moment, it's probably something to do with restrictions ending. Closer contact with loved ones, leisure activities, a normal working life, holidays, church fellowship, being able to sing in church, the list goes on. What's expressed in today's section of the psalm, though, is a deep spiritual longing. Turn with me to Psalm 119 and verse 81. My soul faints with longing for your salvation, but I have put my hope in your word. My eyes fail looking for your promise. I say, when will you comfort me? Though I am like a wineskin in the smoke, I do not forget your decrees. How long must your servant wait? When will you punish my persecutors? The arrogant dig pits to track me, contrary to your law. All your commands are trustworthy. Help me, for I am being persecuted without cause. They almost wiped me from the earth, but I have not forsaken your precepts. In your unfailing love, preserve my life that I may obey the statutes of your mouth. The writer expresses a deep longing. My soul faints. My eyes fail looking. How long must I wait? Maybe it's a sentiment that in present times we can identify with more than usual. But what is he longing for? God's salvation in verse 81. His promise in verse 82. Punishment of his persecutors in verse 84. His comfort in verse 82. For an Old Testament writer, what he meant by all this was probably the, the coming of the promised Messiah. However, without knowing exactly when this individual psalm was written and how much of the Old Testament the writer already had at that point, we don't know exactly what his picture of salvation was. Certainly he wanted rescue from injustice and persecution, whatever form that was taking. He wanted God to put things right. And it's interesting that although he was writing before Jesus came, and he only had part of the Old Testament, he seems to have had real confidence that God would do so. How much greater is the hope for us? We live after Jesus came. We live after and in the light of the cross and resurrection. We may at times cry out, how long, O Lord? But we can be absolutely certain that God will complete his plan. His salvation is sure. Our eternal future with him is secure. The psalm writer holds on to his knowledge of God's unfailing love and trusts that God will somehow rescue him, save him and preserve him. He wants this most of all so that he can continue to live in relationship with God and serve and obey him. Often we long for rescue from immediate temporary circumstances and situations. I wonder whether sometimes our focus on these is too great and our focus on our eternal future too weak. Do we ever cry out for Jesus' return? For God's ultimate justice? For our eternity with him? I guess the truth is that life is comfortable enough that we can wait for our eternal future. We have things to enjoy and look forward to here, and that's fine, there's nothing wrong with that. But the danger is that eternity slips from our gaze altogether. In reality, it's vital that as Christians we keep an eternal perspective because that hope will sustain us through the present. In the meantime, as we wait, whether for eternity or for more tangible and temporal things, let's be guided by the psalmist and trust in God's unfailing love. Let's invest time in his word and build our relationship with him. Let our focus be on him. Let's trust him and walk with him as we wait. Amen. Father, we pray that by your Holy Spirit stirring within us, you would make us aware of our deep need for you. Lord, increase our hunger for you 
that we may yearn to grow closer and that we may invest in our relationship with you. Help us to walk with you this day and always. Amen. Thank you for joining me this week. God bless you.